Hi, this is Joseph Backholm with the Family Policy Institute, here to provide a quick legislative update about what happened in Olympia this week on issues that matter to you. There was a debate yesterday in the House of Representatives on elective funding for abortion. Should Washington State be funding elective abortions in the general budget? And a budget amendment was offered by Representatives David Taylor and Matt Shea. And what this amendment would have done is take funding from elective abortion and directed it to schools to create new bathrooms for transgender students in the wake of the uh, new open bathroom policy. Now undoubtedly this was kind of an editorial comment um, um, about the bathroom policy as well, but certainly an effort to eliminate funding for elective abortion. The fact is the bill was voted down by a 50 to 47 margin. It was virtually a party line vote with all Democrats voting to preserve funding for elective abortion and all Republicans voting to stop public funding of abortion with the exception of Republican Chad Magandas, who's from the 5th District in Issaquah. He voted with the Democrats, actually made a floor speech uh, defending public funding for elective abortion and he sided with the Democrats and that came up with the 50 to 47 margin. One member, uh, Representative Sam Hunt, was absent for that vote. Uh, but it was a close vote. Everybody was on record and this is an issue where we encourage you to reach out to your legislators 1-800-562-6000 or send them an email if you want to and let them know how you feel about the issue of public funding for abortion because now they're all on record and it's the first time in many, many years uh, Washington state legislators have gone on record on the issue of public funding for abortion. So reach out to them. If they voted the way you wanted them to, say thank you and if they didn't, let them know why you don't want to be forced to pay for other people's abortions through your uh, tax dollars. Uh, another story that has kind of uh, developed this issue on the bathroom issue and, and we know that there has been a lot of chatter uh, in the legislature certainly and online uh, for people advocating for this open bathroom policy allowing people to have access to any bathroom based on their gender identity or gender expression. There's an interesting wrinkle in it this week because one of the um, most aggressive kind of online advocates for this is a per person who uh, identifies as a woman now, Johanna Wolf, who in a previous life was Jonathan Wolf. And Jonathan Wolf is actually a convicted sex offender. Now, why does this matter to the story? Is because we now know that there is a convicted sex offender here in Washington State trying to gain access to women's locker rooms through this open bathroom policy. And this just highlights the problem that this, that this bill creates um, because it would create legal liability for a business who would seek to interfere and stop his access to a woman's locker room when it would be clearly inappropriate for him to be in such a place and it would be eminently reasonable for a woman to object to his presence in her locker room while she is showering or changing or anything like that. So this is a, it's an interesting breaking story. You can find out more about it at our website at fpiw.org. We've got a post up there. Go look at the details there and, and, and share and comment that, uh, on that story um, because it's relevant to what we're dealing with here in Washington State. Lots more to come on that and many other issues, but we thank you for following and staying in touch. For more information, feel free to send us uh, questions at info at fpiw.org or always check out our website, fpiw.org. Thanks.